Hi everybody, how are you doing? Hope everybody's doing well today. I thought it really important to come today and just kind of talk to you a little bit about what's going on. Um, a lot of people have been feeling challenged. Like there's a lot of catalyst coming to your life. Um, and I really want you to get used to that word, catalyst. So catalyst, sorry, ah, where did it go? Catalyst is something that comes to your life that spars you to feel something, spars you to think a different way. Um, but in this case, we're looking at a catalyst to spar what you're holding inside your body. And I want you to look at this word catalyst as an objective um, event that the universe has sent to you. And I'm saying universe, you could use the word God, you could wear spirit, whatever's comfortable with you, it is all the same. So the universe is sending you a, an event to wake you up. And those events are gonna continue and continue and continue and continue, okay? And so what, how, do you, how, do, how do you look at it instead of emotionally and get upset the person for being argumentative or troublesome or somebody running into you via the car or whatever, back up, come back into here, stop being out there with your energy, come back in here and start to look at it objectively. Look at it with observational eyes and as a witness and really look at these scenarios of, okay, what am I feeling? What is being elicited inside my body that I'm now feeling that I wasn't aware of just prior to this catalyst or this event? You're gonna learn more about you and what you're storing inside your emotional body. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So hi everybody, my name is Wendy Morgan and I'm the spiritual mentor. Men mentor. I help people traverse this time that which we're currently in to learn more about themselves, how to realign with their spiritual body, or just mainly try to figure out who they are and how can I get rid of all this crap so I can be a better, happier person. So let's move on right into our topic then. So basically this catalyst aspect is teaching us more about us uh, and what's being stored within our body. So I had this happen to me about uh, a week ago for approximately two weeks and it was with um, an associate of mine and it just I felt like I was constantly being um, just you know like somebody's consistently knocking on your door and you're like you know and, and it is I so I'm not I don't have to go into the incident but finally I was able to get enough distance from it where I was like what's going on why is this so affecting me why is this so bother me and I realized that within my cellular level, I was holding not being enough. I was holding that I didn't have boundaries to say to people, no, right? I, I felt like I had to consistently give and give and give and give and give and give when I even didn't have any more to give. And yet this person kept asking more and more and more of me. And I was just going over the edge, literally over the waterfall and just falling. And until in the midst of my fall, I literally was able to hold some ground and to observe it and go, this is not her. It has nothing to do with her. She's the catalyst. So don't, again, look at that person and, or that thing or the event and point and go, it's your fault. No, it's that person did me a favor. That person honored me by create, being the catalyst in me learning about what is being held in my cellular level. So our cellular level holds so many different vibrations. And so lower vibrations currently right now that we're asked to be getting rid of. We need to get rid of them guys because you, if you were helium balloon and you had a whole bunch of weight attached to you, there's no way you could fly. And in order for you to fly, you have to get rid of those lead weights. And those lead weights are the emotional charges that are within your cellular level of your body. So, really be be observant um really be aware of the catalyst going okay this is really roughly my feathers what does this say what does it say about me what is it that i'm holding why is this pissing me off this reminds me of being a child this reminds me of 
how my brother treated me. This reminds me of the abuse I used to receive. This reminds me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so therefore you'll know how to, you know, what you need to remove. Now how to remove it, um, you know, congratulations guys. I'm going to be delivering that class called I Am Agape of how you can release all this. I'm looking at next weekend. Um, if everybody wants more time, let me know, but I'm looking at probably Oh, I don't even know. I got to look at the date next week. Yeah, I think next week can still work either Saturday or Sunday, but I'm thinking Saturday. Uh, so let me know if that, if we kind of get it over, I'm not gonna be able to do it for everybody, but it's going to get an overall view is, you know, does Saturday look good? But anyways, so be aware of those things. That's the, that's the number of things. Start writing it down. So when you take that I'm Agape course, you'll know exactly how to clear it out. Why are we going through this? Well, we're going through this now because we are moving up into higher vibrations right? We've known this for a while. We've talked about this for over a year. So we are no longer in third dimension. We're not, we're not third dimension anymore. Um, third dimension is gone. So some people say, well, then why am I seeing, you know, third dimensional stuff I'm touching? Well, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of because the momentum of what we perceive the world to be and what we expect to see when we get up, what we expect to see all seven billions on this planet have a lot of momentum. That momentum is currently playing out, number one. But what is, let's really ask, what is third dimension? Third dimension is lower vibrational energy that comes into a carbon-based form. And we are, our body, <clears throat> ourselves, are moving out of the lower base carbon-based form. We are currently residing in fourth dimension. Fifth dimension is now locked in the grids have locked in, third dimensional grids are gone, fifth dimensional grids, does that mean fifth dimensional is here? No, it is not. Still kind of feels the same. It's just like, um, you know, if one side of the river was your home and your farmland and the other side of the river was, um, you know, a completely different country, you know, as you're crossing over that bridge, you're still associated with, because you can still see your farmland. So everything feels the same. It's only when you actually step into the other side of the river and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm on a complete different world. So we won't feel see or, excuse me, so we won't thoroughly see and, and completely fulfill our senses about the fifth dimension until it's actually here and upon us. So the bridge is the fourth dimension and that bridge is for us to have the time, thank goodness we have this time, to really release that weight, those weights that are on our healing balloon. So as we release the cellular charges within our body, that makes our balloon rise higher, higher, sorry. So that's kind of like what's going on right now. So we, we kind of, we all deal with things regardless. You don't need the I'm Agape method to do this, but it works really fast. It's really quick to go through and boom, you're done. But we still go things on a regular basis as far as removing, letting go, et cetera, et cetera. And as we do remove and let go of those lower vibrations that are on a cellular level, our balloon rises higher and we can feel higher vibrations. We feel joy, we feel love, we feel excitement, we're happy. And then our mind and our ego comes into mind going, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. So then all of a sudden the balloon comes back down again because you're in fear, you're in stress, you're in anticipation of, oh, I don't know what to do. You go in an anxiety. And so that's lower vibrations and that, that starts to get charged up in your body. And so you, that balloon goes back down. Okay. And you go through the same process again and again and again for this upcoming month or not this upcoming month, for the continue of this month and probably the month thereafter. And God, no, not God only knows we are going to be eliciting. So one thing that's kind of going to be rattling through the cages of the human body is fear. We need to get rid of fear out of this body. Fear is also part of the reptilian brain, but we need to get fear out of this body. You are in a divine, powerful, it's almost said auspicious, part of that true. Um, your divine being of unbelievable love and light. God created everything. God created your soul. Your soul is part of this, this body. You are extremely powerful. And there's nothing, nothing, no one, nothing can touch you, your soul, your spirit. You can never die. You can never do anything wrong. It's just an experience. And we need to work out of that mentality of something may have something over me to make me feel fearful. That is not that something that makes you feel fearful. That is a catalyst to teach you about yourself that, oh my gosh, I'm holding fear about 
dying, right? And I just ran it. I had a beautiful meeting with a woman. Her name was Audrey. And she has a beautiful program that which she has created. And one of the things that she um, addresses with everybody in the program is, I want you to write your obituary. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. We're so afraid of dying because dying is so hidden from death is hidden from our society. So, you know, by writing your own obituary, you're like saying, what will they say about me once I'm gone? Because a lot of times we are so afraid of dying that we don't live. So we need to face that fear, guys, of, okay, so what if I die? My physical body may die, but my soul lives forever. So your fears are going to be, a catalyst is going to find its way in your life for it to tap you on the shoulder so you just let go of fear. And it's very important that you move through this. We all have to let go through fear because if you don't have a control on fear, then fear has control over you. Okay? Now, for those that have been on this journey quite a lot longer time, uh, we're also eliciting more responses in the uh, root chakra and the sacral chakra and the solar plexus chakra. So you're going to find catalysts that's going to be shaking your world and to be pointing to you where you're holding these charges so you can let them go. Why? Because your, your three bottom three chakras are being cleared completely out and completely dissolving. They're no longer needed. They're no longer needed because we they were needed before in a physical body because the um, energetic spiritual energies from God came down through the chakra system to amplify translated throughout the physical body to give it form and function. We are coming out of form. We are coming out of function of that of the 3D, of, that, of a physical carbon-based body. We're moving into a light body. So these chakras are not of any need anymore. So your bottom three chakras, when your chakra um, dissolves, like your root chakra, when it dissolves, um, all your issues with your root and all, everything that the root stands for, tribe, connection to 3D, et cetera, et cetera, that needs to dissolve or you, you're going to be work through things. I'm sorry. It's not something you're, you may intently try to find certain things if your third chakra is still, if your ground root chakra is still there, but more likely the universe is constantly throwing you um, events, catalysts to basically have you move through things so that therefore any issues, unresolved issues within those chakras are going to be worked through and let go. Once that, that chakra is completely dissolved out of this existence, what it does, it goes out into your field. So currently for me, um, my bottom three chakras are already gone. They're already dissolved and they're all outside in my field. So I can still access them. I can still focus, you know, into that, the energy of the root chakra and have it, you know, come into form or come into energetic focus. So therefore I can work through, I can use that energy to work through whatever I may be working through. Since we're talking about the root chakra, um, one of the ladies that is on, uh, her name is Christine. She's PT. She's many, many things, but she also does some, um, she's got her you know, finger on the pulse, uh, being an intuitive that she is like, like myself, like a lot of people. And, uh, she said that she felt that the third dimensional grid is gone and the fifth dimensional grid is now here. And so if you're used to anchoring and in, grounding into Gaia, the third dimensional planet, it might feel like your rug has been pulled out from underneath the, your feet. And so just take some deep breaths and go, okay, no, I just need to refocus, redirect where you're grounding into and gr connect this, even if it's in your imagination, work on connecting into that 5D grid and that 5D earth. So 5D earth is not, phys is not here. Again, what's creating this visualization is the momentum that we all have going. Um, and that's going to change. And a lot of things are going to be changing this year. This is a year of change, guys. And this is your new beginnings and new switches around. So while I have mentioned, uh, uh, um, I mean, I'll just try to save my focus there. So when you do ground, try to work your best to connect in with the 5D grid and ask God to connect you with Sophia Gaia 5D Earth for you to ground. So here you are trusting more of a energetic spiritual pathway versus you personally ego trying to grab ground you down through you know the planet that we perceive as our under our feet is 
where we're going to ground. We're not grounding there anymore. Um, so there's that. I was going to go somewhere else with that. Mm -hmm. My brain is kind of like fuzzy right here. So it's really hard. Sorry. Oh yeah, good things. Okay. Um, so while we know that we're going to be definitely a lot more catalyst is going to be coming our direction to go ahead and show us what's being held in our body on a cellular level so we can shake it and let it go. Um, the amagape is a wonderful way that you can do it without waiting for this catalyst. You can clear those out ahead of time and that'll be hopefully, um, we're going to do that next Saturday. Um, that is going to be a paid program. I think I'm going to ask $50 from everybody, uh, try to keep it as low as possible so everybody can really pretty much afford it. Um, I've got already got a list, so I'm going to make a Facebook messenger of everybody on that list and I will notify them exactly the time. Uh, we're going to do a Zoom and the Zoom is not going to be recorded. I don't believe so. We'll see if that might, I might change my mind on that one. But anyways, moving on, that is one way of doing it. Um, but the catalysts are not only to, um, activate our own being to release that cellular memory that's being of low vibrations in our body, right? So we can lift up, but it's also more than anything being triggered that with the issues that are of your solar plexus, your sacral chakra and your root chakra, because those are being asked. It's time to let go guys. It's time to get all these lower vibrations. Um, so the plus thing on the other side is as we lift up into higher vibrations by letting these things go, guys, this is a time of what do you want? What do you seriously want? Um, what do you want to experience? I was just asked today, what was your, what do you want to do? And I was just like, well, you know, here's some basic needs that I want to move through. And I really want to help the masses and really get my message out there. Cause I know there's a lot of things that I can share that will help a lot of people. But I said, I just want to be a conduit for God and just allow what God needs to speak through to speak through me to you. Um, but I know there's more things. And right now is also a time where the universe is literally looking at each and every one of us okay, you guys have gone through hell. What do you want? What do you, what is having fun for you? What do you enjoy? And it cannot include a person. Just what do you, and not saying what is me and my um, supposal, you know, husband, what do we like to do? No. What do I want? Now, most of the time we all can go as far as what I want, as far as your survival bubble. Everybody's in a survival bubble. Uh, millionaires, they got a survival bubble, but it's a bit bigger, right? But they still have a survival bubble. They know, you know, their limits and what they want to do and don't want to do. And they don't, not going to take, they're going to take chances, but not, you know, extreme chances. They're just, but you no, know, but somebody who's majorly injured, their survival bubble is like right around their body. They're just really interested in getting up, being able to eat and, you know, doing some simple tasks during the day and be able to hopefully not hurt too bad and go to bed. Their survival bubble is very, very, very tight. So we need, so this process is working as far as removing all that programming, removing the cellular vibration, removing the emotional charges. So therefore that bubble can get bigger for all of us. And as that bubble gets bigger, the universe is asking, what do you want? I mean, seriously, we're getting so close to manifesting like that guys. I've been manifesting with a new manifestation, which I've not shared that yet. And hopefully I'll be able to do that. But the new manifestation, guide for 5d and it's amazing how quickly you can do but guys it is not an act of okay if i focus on that and that and that and if i do that and that affirmation and if i if i do 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 all these steps therefore i'll be able to manifest it has nothing to do with that it has all to do with clearing out this clearing out this clearing out this whole cell of your body so it opens up the freeway to manifestation really receiving everything you want to experience in this world so this is all the process. It's all coming to all of us. Um, so I just want to come on here and share just a little bit. Um, today was uh, just an eye-opening day with, with um, Audrey, and I'm sure I'll be doing some videos or some um, interviews with her so that you guys can know more about her program. Um, so I'm just going to go over my notes here. So 5D is anchored in here. We don't see yet, but the energy is anchored in, and it's important that it's anchored in. Because 5D energy, the true 5D energy is so, 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 so high in vibration. At, in, in, in one essence, it's like so beautiful when we experience, we just feel happy, feel joy, we feel everything else. But it's just like if you 
took um, if you took a lamp that's used to the normal voltage that comes out of your normal wattage out of your house in your wall of your house and then you plugged it into the voltage that's way way bigger for your washing machine and dryer it would completely fry that whole entire electrical system same thing happens for our body if we stayed connected to 5d all the time it will just fry our nervous system it would fry our body because it's just not used to that high vibration so we just we're just slowly getting trickles of it at the same time we're learning how to remove all that lower vibration that's currently still stuck within our cellular levels so 5d is anchored in so right now we're mainly experiencing 4d the reason it looks like 3d because we all have momentum and uh we're all very powerful we're co-creators of god and therefore we create and we all create everything we're used to seeing so it has constant momentum 3d is gone um as see here we're all triggered and attracting catalysts that will show up in our life to point the finger at the lower vibrations that are currently um, vibrating in our cellular body and which are definitely associated with our chakras because the chakras are also disappearing and that's good this is all good it's all progress guys but you know so one thing i'm hearing spirit say loud and clear to end up with is you ever guys watched a movie and you're just kind of observing you're not really like into the movie right and you're watching the movie and you're like oh I know exactly what's gonna happen that person's gonna go there and that person's gonna meet him and then they're gonna do that and that, that person's gonna die right we can all pretty much point out mm, he's gonna die right we can kind of call the movie and then other times in some movies you know we see something and they go they, they try to this is the truth. This is what's going on in this movie. And you're like, eh, I'm not buying it. I think it's BS. I don't think that's what's happening. Um, I'm not buying this at all. It doesn't feel truthful. And then later on in the movie, you find out it's not truthful. So this is kind of the analogy that Spirit wants me to share with you right here for all of you guys right now. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to come out. I'm hearing a caveat. There's a lot of things that, mm, oh, there we go. There's a lot of things that are going to come out that are fearful. So fear-based information without a solution is only there to create an outcome of you being scared. If you're scared, that is a lower vibration. If you're scared, you cannot think logically. You can't, guys. It's not the way the brain works. The brain, brain when you're scared, it goes into flight, fight, or freeze, right? It's a sympathetic nervous system, which lodges back here in the reptilian brain which all you're worried about is survival. Guess that bubble that we talked about earlier, that bubble that's indicative of how much we're gonna dream and, and attract to us in our life. If you're in that fear place, that survival bubble just don't funk way in. And what happens whenever we're in fear? We continue looping our head about the thing that we're afraid of and it makes it worse. And we're just digging a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. A couple things are going wrong there. One, it's really hard to crawl out of that hole. And no one's going to get you out of it. That's your job. You chose to dig it. You got to dig your, you got to climb your way out of it. That take, that's hard. That's a lot of work. So don't do it in the first place. Number two. I had number two. I swear I did. Um, oh. Number two, as you go through that, the, the scenarios of the fear that you're moving through in your body, right? You are going to perpetuate scenarios that have more fear of more fear of more fear. Which, if you're projecting that out, that means you're going to bring on more worse problems going on in the world or to your life. Okay? So nobody wants that either. There was another thing about fear. When you're also in fear, especially for a duration of time, you mainly want, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you want me to get stung by 30 to 500 bees. I'll do it. I'll stand in line and I'll get stung and jabbed and stung and jabbed and stung and jabbed. And stung. I don't care if it'll make this fear go away. I'll do it. So you're willing to give up your power versus you do what you meant and supposed to do. You get rid of your own fear. You climb yourself out of the hole. It is no one else's job to throw down a rope and to say, hey, you need to come out of this fear. Or do you want to be stuck down with a whole bunch of hornets? 
It is your job, guys. This is part of the 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 spiritual growth. It is your God. It's your job to climb yourself out of the fear. So in the upcoming months, you're going to hear a lot of things. Some information that's going to come out on the news is going to be like, no, <laughs> no way. Wow. Or I saw that one. It's like the movies, right? Saw that one coming, right? Another one's going to be probably, no, this is eliciting fear. And there's no solution to when they talk about it. So this is bullshit. That's how you can pretty much right there, nail on, what nose on, nail on the nose, arrow in the bullseye. If you hear anything news-based that's coming out and is completely fearful and there's no solution, it is false narrative to make you bring your energy lower again if your energy is low you're in fear you're in flight fight or freeze P constant state of ptsd most of us have been in you're in the reptilian brain you cannot think logically if something's right or wrong you're in a survival bowl you're like give me give me whatever i need to go and stop me from making from feeling fear and you're more easily controlled because if i come to you and i go oh i see you're in a fear bubble okay so i know how to fix your fear make it all go away. I'm going to go and put you in this capsule and I'm going to shoot you to the moon and you can live there. And it doesn't, you know, and, and you listen to me now, like, I'm not going to go to the moon. That's ridiculous. But seriously, it's going to get that ridiculous. So use some discernment, guys. And the way that you can go and get to that place where you have discernment is to clear out your crap out of your cell or your body. Now, other news is going to come out and some of the news that's going to come out is going to potentially make you look at it and go get angry, right? And rightfully so, because if it's something such as if I believed my whole entire life and my education, all my education and all my experience, you know, led me to believe that the sky was blue. And then all of a sudden I said, no, it's really not blue. It's actually a hologram and it's actually black. I mean, I'm using a stupid example, but it would upset me, right? Because my whole being is... Um, what do you want to call it? Um, my foundation of whom I perceive to be as a human and through my experience in this lifetime is based on experiences and education. And if you're telling me that the sky is actually black and it's not blue, then what else could be a lie? And then you start questioning my whole life is yeah. a lie. And, and, and that's, that's called um, identity crisis. And that's really huge. That's big. It, it's, it's no fun to be in. So be careful, as they say, not to throw the baby out the bathwater as you hear this information. Um, so if somebody says the sky's not blue, oh, okay. So that wasn't truth. And, you know, they explain to you why it's actually black, for instance. Okay. Okay. That's that one thing. So it doesn't mean the whole of you is really wrong or the whole of you is to be questioned or the whole of identity to be questioned. It's just that one thing. Now there's going to be more than one things that are come out, but really create some separation guys. Go, okay, that was a lie. Oh, okay, that was a lie. Oh, okay, that was a lie. Whew, okay, oh, okay, that was a lie. But I know me. When your energy's out here, that's where it's going to feel really unstable because when your energy's out here and you're going to find a lot of those things out here that were a lie, it's going to feel very weak ground. So right now, right now, right now, guys, pull it in. Pull it in, pull it in, find you, do your work, find your cellular um, charges that you have on there and get rid of them. Focus here because as you go in and you find out that, that was a lie, you're like, oh, no big deal. I cleared that last week. That doesn't bother me, right? So use your discernment, really listen. There's going to be some things that are going to be, again, like we're looking at the movie. Okay, that's a bunch of bull crap. That's really fear, fear, fear eliciting. This is a time when truth is going to come to the surface. Truth has been hidden for a very long time from the dark that's been out there of painting the world and making us believe that something is truthful when it's really not truthful. Even some things that, that have been very good and very fun and great to enjoy. And we think it's really great for us. It's not because it's just the dark has um, uh, marketed it mar as um, advertised it to be really great. And that advertisement is a program that programs us to think, oh yeah, that's really good for us when it's really, really not. So, um, let's see, is there anything else that spirit wants me to share with you? Ah, okay. Love yourself. <laughs> Love yourself. 
love yourself. We are coming out of the aha that we are not a carbon-based body, but we're coming out of that existence, experience of being a carbon-based body and moving into a light body. I know it seems kind of like sci-fi. What? Are you kidding me? How can that be even scientifically? I don't know how it works. I'm not God. I don't have to make it. I don't have to know how it works. I just know that what I'm told and, you know, the thousands and millions of uh, intuitives and light workers are all seeing the same thing. And so as we move more into our light body, there's that essence of we've got to let go of who we think we are. And that, that, that bridge is just loving you. Just love you. Let go of the things, let go of the you who you thought you were. Let go of this lifetime. Let go of the people. If we were in a past lifetime, if you were to, the only way in the past to get to heaven or get to the fifth dimension or get to the next place in a higher level, we'd have to, this carbon-based body had to die and our soul would basically rise and be able to be reborn into the next space. That was the only place in which how we could move forward into, what the heck, oh, it's my own hair. <laughs> it's tickling my shoulder. Um, that's the only way which we could move into a higher vibration. Here, right now, and you're here for a reason. You're here for a purpose. You chose to be here right now. We're all here now lifting the planet, lifting ourselves into a higher vibration, and we're doing it all while being in the body. So in a past life, you had to say, in essence, goodbye to your family and friends and die. And you never see them again. So I know a lot of people are reaching out and they're saying, oh my gosh, I have completely wiped my friend list away. Um... You know, I, 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 I no longer connected with them. I, I, I don't see eye, eye with them. What the heck? Think about it from this way. It's perspective, guys. We, in essence, are human perception of who we think we are due to the reflection of this lifetime. Um, that is dying away because, again, that's just a lifetime that we had. But now we're being called into a whole new um, mission, which is to be light workers and to get ourselves up and change ourselves, allow our cellular level to change by letting go of those lower vibrations. And we're having to say goodbye to our friends, some family members that were in this lifetime. They're not going to serve us and where we're going and we're not on the same path. And that's okay. I'm here to tell you that's okay. Give yourself permission to let go of the people, the family, whomever that doesn't Reflect where you're going and support where you're going and love where you're going. And, you know, even though you might wonder, I don't know where that is at. You know, what is it? Where is that at? Well, you know, if you don't know, you know, I'm, I'm a type of person that can help you. I've got a friend, Kathleen, who does the same work. I've got like four or five other friends that do the same type work. But so, but the point being is be okay to let go of people. Be okay to no longer have them in your life. Where you are going, you need to stay focused on you. That's why relationships right now are splitting like crazy. Or people are like, mm, nope, don't want to be involved in a relationship. Thank you very much. Because the focus is here. It's very, very important to be here. You are more than just a human body. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You are far greater than this carbon-based body. So as we move forward, you are going to be triggered in many ways. If your energy is out here, it's going to be challenging. If you stay in here, be the witness and observer, not only to yourself and what you're thinking, feeling, but also to the world, you're observant to them, you'll be able to discern better. You'll be allowed to look at those catalysts and go, oh, all right, I'm getting upset. I feel like they're stepping all over me. I feel like they're disrespecting me. Hmm, okay, let's follow this down. I'm going to go apply the amagape method and do that. <laughs> Excuse me. So there's a lot of changes. I hope this was helpful. My brain is really foggy, so I don't even know if this made sense. I hope it did. hope it made sense to you. Reach out if you want to go ahead and have a session. Um, as far as the I'm Agape, you know, if you've never heard of it and you want to go through it, it's a really simple program. We'll probably get it done. I'm going to give it two hours, but it'll probably be less than that. Um, honestly, I can do the method with a person in 15 minutes. But I'm also kind of moving energy through them. When somebody does it, does that themselves and they know exactly what they're doing, it literally can get done in two minutes. I have a, I have a client, literally. She can do it in probably five seconds. 
and that's Lisa. Lisa can share with you, at least if you want to share down below what your experience of Amagape and John, if you would do the same thing and Diane Happer, if you could do the same thing and who else? Um, Helene, if you could do the same thing and anybody else that's been on here that has, we've used the I'm Agape, please give everybody an, an idea as how this has helped you, how this has changed your life. I'd really appreciate that. And how long does it actually, how long have you been doing it? So how has this changed your life? How long have you been doing it? And how long does it actually take you now to go through the process? Um, for me, um, and this also goes through timelines and also lifetimes clears them all up as well um, for me sometimes I can go through it in under two minutes and sometimes it takes me about 15 minutes it depends upon the issue so for instance a while ago I mentioned they're disrespecting me okay so obviously I've got a charge of feeling disrespected where did that come from and so I just go through the process and boom there it is clear it up gone that simple that quick anyway I better shut up I love you guys. It's a beautiful day in Santa Barbara. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you are. Pray your heart and your love. You just pour it into yourselves, guys. Anything and everything that you've ever looked to another person for that I wish they did this for me, I wish they did that for me, I wish I felt that, that is what you need to give yourself. So turn around, look in the mirror, give to you, love you, be with you. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.